Welcome to Couch Talk. Today we'll meet a real life warrior whose positive outlook on life has turned a story of illness into a story of resilience and hope. My name is Nally Augustine. I'm a blogger and cancer survivor, and I am passionate about life. Nali, as you know, there's a lot of bloggers out there. Um, it's a career that has really become a popular modern career, right? That didn't exist uh, a couple of years ago. Um, the most popular ones are fashion bloggers and event bloggers. There's so many, especially in Montreal. Uh, however, you kind of stand out of the bunch. Can you tell us a little bit about what your topic is for your blog? Well, Nali.ca is my diary. Okay. is literally my online journal and I started the day that I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Wow, the same exact day? The same exact day. I remember I got the phone call from my doctor telling me that it was official, my tumors were tumors, mm -hmm. and I just had this reflex because I used to record everything anyways and I was really big on just social media. <laughs> it was fun to me. So at that point, I just felt like I needed to express myself. And so I pulled out my phone and I just started recording myself and how I felt on that exact moment. Mm -hmm. And then after that, it was just like test after test and appointment after appointment. There was always something like happening, like a story to tell. Mm -hmm. And I just felt this need to express myself. And so I created my blog, and when I released it, there was over 15,000 hits in one day. Wow. And then I'd just get hundreds of emails from other women who were also in their 20s who had breast cancer saying, oh, I thought I was alone. Right. And then now they found me. And then I just, I knew I had something going here. Mm -hmm. And what's um, touching about this is that a lot of people do think that breast cancer is something that's more for older women. Yeah. Uh, they tell you, I mean, I have cancer in my family, breast yes. cancer, my mom had that. And so when I go do my checkups, they used to always say, don't worry about it. Worry about it when you're like over 30 and then, you know, but the odds of you getting it young are just slim to yeah, none, that's so don't worry. My, that's ex my exact story is that initially I felt the lumps myself after taking a shower um, when I was washing myself and I, went to my family doctor whom I was just going to see because of my annual checkup. Mm -hmm. And she told me, it's probably just a cyst, it's probably just fiber, or extra hormones, it's normal in your 20s. And when she gave me a referral paper to go get checked, I misunderstood it was for an ultrasound, but I was asking for a mammogram. You know, when you think of like getting right. your breast checked, you think of a mammo. And when I gave my birth date, they would tell me, oh no, we don't uh, see women under the age of 40. Right. So immediately you think that it's not even possible, you know? So I thought it was important through my blog to just make that as public as possible so that people see that a young woman who's healthy, who's fit, who's active can get breast cancer. Right, right. I, I think it's important for people to know that and to go for checkups, even if they are in their 20s. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, what about the Nally before the blog? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of person were you? The, I mean, I'm, ass you know, I'm assuming you weren't really uh, sure about what you wanted to do career-wise. Exactly. And I'm fairly sure you didn't expect to get diagnosed. <laughs> no, <laughs> <So>. <laughs> last thing. Well, I graduated with a degree in communications. Mm -hmm. So the person I was, I guess I was always active. I was really into fitness and sports. I mm -hmm. used to dance, I used to play basketball. Um, I was always doing something new and people loved that about me because they never knew what to expect. Right. Me, it was a problem because I never knew what to pursue just because I'm the type of person who is so passionate about life that I loved trying a lot of different right. things. And so I guess people already were interested about my life because they never knew where I was headed. One day I would be, I don't know, hosting an event here. I'd be doing a dance show there. So because I was so active on social media already, people right. tend, I already had this little following of like, you know, what's Nally up to today? Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> Were you, did you have a blog before or? I didn't, I've always wanted to and I actually auditioned for like Much Music, um, oh, cool. VJ Search, <laughs> yeah, because that's something that interested me too. And everyone, after doing my audition video, everyone was like, you have to start a YouTube channel, you have to start a YouTube channel. And that was like a few months before get being diagnosed. So okay. I guess that's where the idea of starting Nali.ca, my video log and, and writing derived from is just mm -hmm. me always wanting to do it, but never knowing what for. And then it's for an even better reason because it's helping others. Right, mm -hmm. right. And did you know that it would become so popular once you <laughs> launched it? Honestly, I was doing it for myself. Okay. Like I, it was my form of therapy. I'm just someone who needs to express myself. Like I have to let it out. Right. And that's what a diary is for. That's why right. I call it the diary of a 25 year old battling breast cancer. Cause it's just my thoughts on the moment. I let it out and I feel free. Right. And so when I released it, it was mostly just for um, my family, my friends, okay. cause I wanted to keep them updated and repeating my story over and over again. <laughs> it was kind of, right. it was kind of <laughs> annoying. But then, yeah, when I released it, I guess it was that shock factor of like right. that girl who's always been so active right. and fit and healthy has breast cancer. So the social girl just got yeah. shared and shared and shared. And uh, I've always had like thousands of views every day. It's pretty crazy. That's amazing. Yeah. And you were you mentioned uh, keeping your family updated. Mm -hmm. How has all this impacted them? Because they seem very present in everything that you do. Yeah, for sure. It's a it's been a huge shock to them. But the fact that I'm handling it well, which is why I'm handling it well, because everything that makes my family sad makes me sad. So right. it's kind of my motivation to make sure that I stay strong. Just because seeing my mother cry is probably like the worst thing to me. Right. So um, they've been super supportive, but of course, since my spirits have been really high, they, they have no problem with it. But um, right. they find it pretty interesting that, you know, my life is out there in public, right. but they're enjoying the attention too. <laughs> Are they? <laughs> and they've done, uh, did they do one of the breast cancer run with you also, if oh, I'm yeah. not mistaken? Yeah, exactly. In 2013, we did the run for the cure mm -hmm. and um, we ended up being um, 130 runners more for Team Nally okay, and cool. we raised over $27,000. So the Canadian Breast Cancer Foundation loved our story and loved our right. efforts. So they invited my family to be a part of their campaign this year. So my family is part of the commercials that are going That's on. That's amazing. Very cool. And how, uh, how has this impacted your romantic life? Oh, well, luckily, <laughs> well, what's funny about this story is that it's kind of what created my <laughs> romantic really? life. Well, it's because my boyfriend and I were friends before and I was at a certain point in my life where I didn't really want to get into a relationship. And I just had a bunch of fears and barriers up, but I knew right. he always like was more like it was more than just friends and he was right. interested in me, but I, I had my fears, let's just say. Right. And with my diagnosis, he really showed up at every single moment that wow. I needed him. And he, he went the extra mile when he could have easily got scared and back away. Right. So what else, what more does a woman need? Right, you know? seriously, <laughs> talk about like showing your, your love for someone. Exactly, and, and he's been really supportive and he's been probably key to me feeling confident and still beautiful no matter everything and all the symptoms I right. encountered, such as losing my hair. He, he loved my bald head <laughs> and he loves my short hair now. So Did he shave his hair too? With that? Yeah, I he know did. Some of your, your brothers to, you know, in camaraderie, shaved their heads. Exactly, they broke the ice for me. They shaved my head, bef their heads before I did. And okay. th we just did it all in one day and it was, it became fun right. <laughs> at that point. Right. You know? That's amazing. What a, I mean, you have such a great um, support group yeah, around it's, you. It's key. And it's key. It, I can only imagine because, you know, you've shown so much strength throughout all this. And uh, it must help to have such a supportive family and, and, and an amazing boyfriend who shows up for everything. Yeah, I don't know what I'd do without them, <laughs> honestly. But you know what? I have a feeling they probably take a lot of strength to, from you. Like you inspire them to be stronger. And, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've said this before in uh, fitness classes, because you take classes at Urban Body yes, Studio. I do. And, and I do also. And I always think, like, if you can go right <laughs> out of, like, <laughs> radiation to workout, I mean, 
Uh, what excuse can anyone use that day? <laughs> right. I try to push myself and challenge myself as much as possible, but I think exercise um, is key to just beating. It's prevention, right? And like often people f feel tired after their treatments, and I'm like, well, did you take a walk today? Did you, did you exercise? Did you break a yeah. sweat? And often after Urban Body, when I'm drenched in sweat, obviously, <laughs> you know how it is, I feel even more energized than I right. did in the morning. Right. Yeah, the exercise kind of wakes you up of and, and gives you the extra energy, for sure. And where do you see yourself now? I mean, you, you're in the final stages, right, of the yeah. radiation. Yeah. and I'm almost done. You're almost, almost done. Almost, almost cancer-free. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> so what are you going to do after? What, what are your plans for the blog? Okay, for the blog, um, what I found, Nali.ca was helpful to all women going through breast cancer on the moment. As soon as they would be diagnosed, it's, that's life now. You go on the internet and you right. search your diagnosis and they'd find me. And I want, it, I want to continue to do that. I want to still be present even when I'm cancer free, even when I'm done with it and I have long hair down to the butt again. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to be that girl that they search, right. that they see me bald, no eyebrows, no lashes sick to the bone and still smiling and still living life and still exercising and sh proving to them that, you know, you can still, you, you'll make it, you can right. still make it, you can, you can still live, you can still be happy despite having this diagnosis. And I, I, that's what I want Nally.ca to be, just right. to, to constantly be online and be there for those who are newly diagnosed and who knows, start my own foundation with it. Right, and for sure. And people can, can see you doing better and being yeah. healthy, and maybe they can follow you in you maintaining your health. Exactly. I, that's another plan. I have so many plans, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> There's always so many things I want to do, but yes, definitely that. The recovery journey is a huge part of it, where I end up kind of, because what me, what inspired me is seeing other women and seeing where they were at, and I saw a woman who was diagnosed with breast cancer and then she ended up being like this fitness girl and she was like had so many like her body was amazing she was jacked she was wow. strong and I was like wow like if she went through it then I so can I you know right. so that's probably also what I want to do with my blog so you want to continue inspiring people definitely hopefully this I can make a living out of inspiring people that would be my dream my biggest dream. right of yeah. course I think you will <laughs> I have no doubt about that I, I think you will and I think uh, you know a foundation would be great right now yeah. why not you yeah. already have the following so exactly uh, specifically to young women mm -hmm. with breast cancer because I think there's definitely there definitely needs to be more research on mm -hmm. that and more awareness Definitely. I mean, in the medical industry, I find that diseases that are specific to women are still a bit under under research. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I mean, Couch Talk is all about female empowerment, right? <laughs> and I think one of the things should be a better education yeah. uh, of uh, the, the female body and the illnesses that, that we exactly. have. I felt my lumps myself, but it took me probably over a year to even do something about it. And mm -hmm. if I could prevent that, from happening and that'd be another dream come true. Right, definitely. So with everything that you've gone through now <laughs> and everything that you know now, what would you say to your younger self or to your uh, pre-cancer self? My pre-cancer self? Um, honestly, nothing. Because <laughs> I think everything happens for a reason mm -hmm. and that's just how life goes. Like. Every, all the little dots end up connecting, and that's mm -hmm. what I'm realizing today, that everything that I've been through in the past makes sense, so I right. have no regrets, and I wouldn't give myself a heads up for anything. No? no. <laughs> Not a little tap on the shoulder? No, probably <laughs> if I felt those lumps, then yeah, go get it checked immediately, and not a year later. Okay. I prioritized uh, a lot of other things than going to the doctor at, the, at that right. stage of my life. So. Right. And is this the same advice you'd give to maybe a young woman who is just now getting the news? Yes, definitely. Um, I think my biggest advice to them is to live day by day, not to freak yourself out because it's going to be a whole lot of information if ever you do get diagnosed. And my biggest advice is to never hide. And I think that's what helped me. I think that's what Nally.ca is about. My, my whole diary was making my journey public but then I had nothing to be ashamed about because right. 
everybody already knew. And I could just go walk down the street with my bald head and no one would be like, right. why is she bald? It wasn't a secret. It wasn't a secret and I think that's the biggest release and you can continue living your life the way you always did if you just be yourself and don't feel like you need to hide. Mm -hmm. Especially something like that. I mean, what is there to hide, you know? It's, uh, it's, it's life yeah. that happens. And it's you an know? extra stress, you know, right. like having to wear a wig and like no, like make up a story right. and stuff. No, just live your life and to the fullest and do everything you love to do every day. Mm -hmm. Well, you're definitely an inspiration. I hope that your vlog continues for a very, very long time. Thank you. <laughs> and you're already getting back in shape and doing all these things. So Trying. I think <laughs> if anything, it'll maybe it'll transition from, you know, recovery to just living a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I can't imagine it not being inspirational, no matter what you decide to do. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so Nali, thank you so much for coming on Couch Talk oh, today. You've been uh, amazing and inspiration. And I, I think you're just so, so brave. You're definitely a badass chick. I don't know <laughs> if I can say that. They'll bleep it. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you to you guys for joining us on another episode of Couch Talk. And li live your day to the fullest, right? <laughs> See you next time on Couch Talk. <laughs>